Section 8.2, we're going to be talking about confidence interval. In section 8.1, you gave me the interval. In section 8.2, we're going to take it or kick it up a notch and we're going to talk about the probability of how confident we are. Let's go ahead and take a look at the example. That makes much more sense. The amount of credit card debt that an individual carrier follows a normal distribution with a population standard deviation. So here I have my population standard deviation, which is so my population standard deviation is 0 0.7 thousand dollars, 0.7 thousand dollars, an unknown population mean. So I don't know what the population mean is. So what I'm saying is the amount of credit card debt that an average individual has, I don't know. The information that I got here is from the sample that I took. So the, I took 45 people and I asked them how much debt they have and the, and the results that I got is $4,200. I'm asking you to find the 90% confidence interval of population mean. So I want you to take a step back. Look what happened. I'm trying to calculate the amount of debt of an individual in general, right? But I know I can't ask everyone. So I took a sample of 45 people and I asked them, sir, how much debt do you have, ma'am? How much debt do you have? And they told me that they have a debt of $4,200. This is my sample mean. This is $4,200. And the population standard deviation is 0.7. I know this is the normal curve. I know this is a normal curve. I want you to look what's happening here. Look at the beauty of statistics. So this, this is the middle number, the middle value of that population is mu. And that is unknown to me. The population mean is unknown. Now, the sample that I got, the sample mean that I got, it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere, because I don't know what this is. What do I mean? If I know this is 40, then I know, I'm sorry, if I know that was, that's not 40, what is it? If I know this is 4, then I know 4.2 is to the right-hand side. But if I know this is 3, I know 4.2 is further down. If I know this is 5, I know 4.2 is to the left-hand side. But I don't know what this is. I am unaware of what the population mean is. Now, I don't know where should I plot my sample mean. I don't know if it's here, 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 but this is where the empirical formula comes into picture. I know that because of the normal distribution, 68% of my data falls in one standard deviation. 95% of the data falls between two standard deviations. 99.7% of the data falls between three standard deviations. So what does that mean? I'm telling you that let's just say my population mean is here. The sample mean, sorry. What do I mean by that? Let's just say my 4.2 is right here, okay? 4.2 is right here. I don't know what the population mean is, but according to the empirical rule, I know 68% of the data lies between one standard deviation. 95% of the data lies between two standard deviations. 99.7% of the data lies between three standard deviations. So when you work your way back, you are telling me that you are 95% confident that the real population mean lies between two standard deviations. You are 99.7% confident that the real population mean lies between three standard deviations. Okay, so that's exactly what population uh, confidence intervals are. So you don't know the exact value, but using the normal distribution, you are telling me that you are 95% confident that it's between two standard deviations. That means the population mean can be anywhere in that range. You're 97% confident that it's been three standard deviations. It could be anywhere. So what you're trying to do here is because population mean is unknown, you're trying to catch the population mean using the empirical rule, all right? So how do I do that? So here I have the problem. This is right from your homework. Uh, it's the same thing, the credit card, the same problem that we're doing. So first thing I have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and set my mean. As you can see, my mean is 4.2. I'm gonna use this X bar stands for mean. I'm gonna use this arrow and move the mean to 4.2. Be very careful with that. There you go. Oops, oh, come on. There. 
Are you kidding me? 4.2. Standard deviation is 0.7, so I'm going to move it to the left. One more to the left. Yeah, there you go. And sample size is 45. Sample size to the right. To the right. To the right. Come on. There you go. I'm trying to move it to 45. Can you all tell? Yeah, there you go. And now what are they asking me? They're asking me to find the 90% confident interval. So you're going to come all the way here to the blue arrow and you're going to move your 90 percentage. Once you're moving it, I want you to see what's happening to the area, okay? So the more confident, the more percentage that you are, that means you're spreading wider and wider. You're giving yourself more room to make an estimate about your population mean. So I'm going to move from 5 to 9, which is 90%. So that's exactly what they're asking me. 90% is what? So, so when I'm saying, if I have my confidence interval from 4.2 to 4.37, I am 90% confident that the population mean is going to be in this range. Okay? So 90% of the time, the population mean is going to be in that range. And once I know that, I'm going to scroll down. And here I have it, my answer, 4.3 and 4.37, rounding off to two decimals. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. The time it takes eighth grader boys to run 50 yard dash has a normal distribution with a population standard deviation of 1.1 seconds and unknown population mean. Again, I don't know the population, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell you how confident I am based on my values that I can find the population mean or I can estimate the population mean. So standard deviation is 1.1 if a random sample of 32. So as soon as I know those values, I'm going to move them. Uh, so I have standard deviation of 1.1. Oh, I just missed it. There you go. And the sample size is 32. God help me here. To the right. There you go. Whoa, good. That's good. And what is happening? If a random sample of 38, oh, sorry, 32 eighth grade boys are taken, the result is 7.8. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to find what is the average dash, what, what time does it take an eighth grader to run a 50-yard dash, right? Because they can take all eighth graders. By the time they take, the eighth graders probably will be married, right? You can't get every eighth grader. So they take a sample of 32 eighth graders and they calculate their time. And the average time that they calculated was 7.8 seconds. Now, using this, they want to conclude about the population of all the eighth graders. And that's the whole concept here. Every time you're using sample, it's not for that sample. You're trying to use the sample to conclude about the population. Okay, so 7.8. Let me go da, 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 to the right, to the right, to the right. There you go, 7.8. So I have my mean check standard deviation check matches mean matches 7.8 standard deviation matches 1.1 sample size matches what do they want find a 90 percent confidence interval so i'm telling you 90 percent so 90 so i'm telling you that i'm 90 percent confident that the population i can catch the population mean from this range to this range so i'm simply going to use the blue arrow to move it to 90 percent and as you can see I am 90% sure that the population mean will be in between 7.48 and 8.11. All right, again, three simple steps. You make sure you check your sample mean. You make sure you move your slider to population standard deviation. You move your slider to the sample size. And then depending on what confidence interval they're asking you, you move your slider to that confidence interval. Okay. Hope this helps. Again, if you have any questions, please make sure you email me or contact me through Teams. Good luck.